In the serenity of his wisdom, the great Buddha once observed, You will not be punished for your anger, you will be punished by your anger. These profound words not only encapsulate the essence of Buddhist philosophy, but also offer a beacon of hope to anyone struggling with the tumultuous waves of anger. Have you ever paused to ponder how vastly different your life could be if you mastered the art of staying calm? Imagine confronting every challenge, not with frustration, but with a serene smile, transforming conflicts into opportunities for growth and understanding. Today, we delve deep into ancient wisdom, exploring seven powerful Buddhist teachings designed to free you from the chains of anger, forever altering how you perceive and react to those heated moments of life. Anger, an emotion as old as time, has the potential to cloud judgment, strain relationships, and even harm one's health. It's an emotion that no one is spared from, and yet, the ways in which we handle our anger can define the course of our lives. What if, instead of being controlled by anger, we could control it? What if our darkest moments of fury could be transformed into lessons of profound personal growth and enlightenment? Buddhism, a philosophy steeped in the pursuit of inner peace and enlightenment, offers timeless strategies to tame the fiery beast of anger. These teachings encourage us not just to suppress or ignore our anger, but to understand its roots and transform it into wisdom and understanding. Today's journey into Buddhist teachings is not just about managing anger, it's about revolutionizing your entire approach to emotional turmoil. The first of these teachings takes us to the very core of anger, ignorance. According to Buddha, it is not the external situations themselves, but our ignorance about the true nature of life that fuels our anger. We often operate under the illusion that life should conform to our desires and expectations. When reality falls short, frustration and anger inevitably bubble up. Buddha's wisdom guides us to a deeper understanding of life's impermanent and unpredictable nature, encouraging us to cultivate a mindset that embraces rather than resists life's ebb and flow. Another powerful lesson from Buddha teaches us about the importance of detachment. It's easy to feel wronged by the comments and actions of others, but Buddha likened holding on to anger to grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. Ultimately, you are the one who gets burned. This metaphorical wisdom implores us to let go of the need to react to every perceived slight or negative comment. Instead, we learn to maintain our inner peace, understanding that the negativity of others reflects their battles, not our worth. Self-reflection emerges as another formidable tool in our arsenal against anger. Regular introspection allows us to recognize our triggers and understand why certain situations light our fuse. This practice isn't about finding fault within ourselves, but about fostering an awareness that empowers us to choose calmness over confrontation. The teachings also extol the virtues of stillness and silence, not as escapes from reality, but as tools to confront it with greater clarity and compassion. In moments of potential conflict, a pause filled with a deep, mindful breath can be the bridge over troubled waters, guiding us back to rational shores. Mindfulness, the heart of Buddhist practice, teaches us to live in the present and observe our emotions without judgment. This doesn't just help in managing anger, it transforms it. By understanding the underlying causes of our anger, we can address these root issues with compassion, often discovering that beneath our anger lie hurt, fear or frustration. And then there's gratitude, a transformative practice that shifts our focus from what's going wrong to what's going right. Gratitude doesn't just diminish anger, it enhances our overall sense of well-being, reminding us of the good all around us, even in moments of distress. Finally, trusting in the natural order and letting go of the need to control everything leads to a profound inner peace. 
by accepting that we can't control everything and everyone, we free ourselves from a significant source of frustration and anger. As we explore these teachings, remember that this journey is about more than just quelling anger. It's about nurturing a profound and enduring peace. Join us as we unlock the secrets to turning the fires of anger into the light of wisdom. Stay tuned, engage with our content, and embark on this transformative journey to a more peaceful, understanding, and connected life. Part 1. The Core of Anger – Beyond Ignorance In the tranquil teachings of Buddhism, ignorance is not merely a lack of knowledge, but a profound misunderstanding of the nature of life and our place within it. This ignorance, often deeply ingrained and seldom questioned, is pinpointed as the primary catalyst for anger. But what exactly does Buddhism teach us about this link, and how can we break free from it to manage our anger effectively? This exploration into the core of anger invites us to dismantle our misunderstandings and see beyond the illusions that so often control us. Understanding Ignorance in Buddhism Ignorance in the Buddhist context refers to avidya, which is the misunderstanding or misperception of the nature of reality. It is a fundamental confusion about the nature of the self and the nature of phenomena. We often believe that things, including ourselves, are permanent, independent, and have an intrinsic identity or self that we need to protect and satisfy. This belief leads us to desire things we like and reject things we dislike, setting us up for frustration and anger when the world does not conform to our expectations. Buddha taught that life is impermanent, interdependent, and devoid of any intrinsic self. When we fail to recognize these truths, we cling to our desires and aversions, which inevitably leads to suffering and anger. Every instance of anger can be traced back to a desire that has been thwarted or an aversion that has been provoked. Buddha's Insight on Clinging The Buddha once explained that anger arises from clinging to our personal expectations and desires. He illustrated this with a simple analogy. Clinging to our thoughts and feelings is like holding on to a hot coal. We intend to throw it at someone else, yet we are the ones who get burned. This vivid imagery helps us visualize the self-destructive nature of holding on to anger and invites us to consider letting go as a viable alternative. Real Life Scenarios Where Anger Manifests Consider the daily frustrations many face, being stuck in traffic, dealing with a difficult co-worker, or facing criticism. Each scenario triggers anger because it clashes with our expectations. In traffic, we expect to move freely and reach our destination on time. With co-workers, we expect cooperation and respect. When criticized, we expect understanding and appreciation. Our inability to accommodate the impermanence and unpredictability of life fuels our anger. Shifting Perspectives Through Mindfulness Mindfulness, a key practice in Buddhism, teaches us to observe our present experiences without attachment or judgment. By practicing mindfulness, we can watch our anger rise and recognize it as a response to our thwarted expectations. This observation allows us to see the impermanence of the anger itself. It comes and goes, influenced by our clinging to how things should be. Case Studies of Transformation 1. The Executive Consider an executive who often lost his temper during meetings. By applying mindfulness and examining the roots of his anger, he realized it stemmed from his fear of appearing incompetent, this realization led him to work on his self-confidence and communication skills, reducing his anger significantly. 2. The Parent A mother found herself frequently angry at her children's messy habits. Through reflection, she understood that her anger was rooted in her desire for control and perfection. 
by accepting the impermanence and unpredictability of life, especially with young children, she learned to approach the situation with compassion and humor, easing her anger. Exercises to deepen, understanding and reduce anger. Mindfulness Meditation Sit quietly each day, focusing on your breath. As thoughts and emotions arise, simply observe them without attachment. This practice can help you recognize the impermanence of your emotions, including anger. Journaling. Write about instances when you felt angry. Note what triggered your anger and how it relates to your expectations. This exercise can help you understand your patterns and prepare you to handle similar situations more calmly in the future. Cognitive restructuring. Challenge the beliefs that underpin your anger. For instance, if you get angry when interrupted, question the belief that your speech must always flow without disruption. Is it really catastrophic if someone interrupts you, or could it be an opportunity for dialogue? Integrating the teachings into daily life. Integrating these insights requires consistent practice. Start small by recognizing one or two daily situations where you typically get angry. Apply mindfulness to these scenarios and observe your thoughts and feelings. Gradually, as you become more aware of the impermanence and interdependence of life, you'll find your anger diminishing. Conclusion of Part 1 Understanding and overcoming the root causes of anger through the lens of Buddhism is not about suppressing this powerful emotion, but about transforming our relationship with it. By recognizing the role of ignorance and clinging in fueling our anger, we equip ourselves with the tools to respond to life's challenges with wisdom instead of wrath. As we continue to explore the remaining teachings in this series, remember that each step on this path not only helps in managing anger, but also paves the way for a more peaceful and insightful existence. Through these explorations, we invite you to journey with us as we dismantle the illusions of ignorance, embrace the truths of impermanence and interdependence, and transform the very way we perceive and react to the inevitable challenges of life. Part 2. Embracing Detachment to Manage Anger In the serenity of Buddhist teachings, detachment isn't about indifference or a lack of care, but about maintaining a balanced emotional state regardless of external circumstances. This part delves into how embracing detachment can profoundly shift our response to situations that typically trigger anger, allowing us to maintain our inner peace amidst life's chaos. Understanding Detachment in Buddhism Detachment in Buddhism refers to letting go of the attachments that cause suffering. It is the practice of not allowing one's inner peace to be disturbed by the chaos of the external world. This doesn't mean we don't care about outcomes or people. Rather, it means we don't tie our emotional well-being to them. By cultivating detachment, we reduce the power external conditions have over our feelings and reactions. The Misconceptions of Detachment Many misconceive detachment as cold or uncaring. However, in Buddhist practice, it is a profound engagement with the world without being emotionally overwhelmed by it. It allows individuals to respond to life's ups and downs with compassion and wisdom rather than reactive emotions like anger. Real life application, not letting others control your emotions. Consider a scenario where someone's harsh words might trigger an immediate response of anger. Detachment teaches us to observe these words just as we would observe clouds passing in the sky. Noticeable, but not capable of disrupting our inner calm. By not allowing these words to dictate our emotional state, we protect our peace and gain the clarity to respond appropriately. Buddha's teaching on anger and detachment Buddha once said, holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one who gets burned. 
This powerful imagery illustrates the self-destructive nature of anger and the liberation found in detachment. When we detach from the desire to retaliate, we free ourselves from the cycle of anger and suffering. Practical Steps to Cultivate Detachment 1. Mindful Observation Practice observing your reactions to external stimuli without immediately acting on them. This could be as simple as pausing when you feel anger rising and taking three deep breaths. Reflection Regularly reflect on instances where you felt controlled by external circumstances and explore how a detached perspective might have altered the outcome. 3. Engagement without expectation Engage in your relationships and activities without the heavy burden of expectations. Appreciate moments and interactions for what they are, rather than what you want them to be. Stories of transformation through detachment. The business leader. A CEO frequently felt anger towards underperforming employees. By practicing detachment, he learned to approach performance issues with a focus on growth and development rather than personal disappointment, which improved his relationships and business outcomes. The artist. An artist struggled with harsh criticism. Through detachment, she learned to separate her self-worth from her art's reception, allowing her to appreciate constructive feedback and ignore baseless negativity, enhancing her creativity and peace of mind. Challenges in practicing detachment. Detachment can be challenging, especially in a world that often equates emotional intensity with authenticity. Overcoming this requires understanding that true emotional depth comes from clarity and wisdom, not from reactive impulses. Integrating detachment into daily life. Start by identifying areas in your life where your happiness is heavily dependent on external validation or specific outcomes. Gradually work to release these dependencies and observe how your emotional landscape changes. Regular meditation can facilitate this shift, providing the mental space needed to practice detachment. Conclusion of Part 2 Embracing detachment does not mean disconnecting from life, but rather connecting with it more profoundly without letting it dictate our inner peace. As we progress through Buddhist teachings on managing anger, remember that each step is not just about reducing anger, but about cultivating a life of peace and mindfulness. By integrating detachment, we equip ourselves to face life's adversities with equanimity and grace transforming potential conflicts into opportunities for personal growth and deeper understanding. As we continue our journey in the next parts, we will explore further how other Buddhist principles like mindfulness and gratitude intertwine with detachment to create a robust framework for managing anger and cultivating lasting peace. Part 3. Self-Reflection as a Superpower in the pursuit of taming anger through Buddhist teachings, self-reflection emerges as a potent tool, not merely for self-awareness, but as a method to dissect and understand the underpinnings of our emotional responses. This segment explores how self-reflection can illuminate the roots of anger and transform our reactions from impulsive to intentional. Understanding Self-Reflection in Buddhism Self-reflection in Buddhism is more than just thinking about oneself. It involves a deep, mindful examination of one's thoughts, actions and motivations. It's about observing our mental and emotional processes without judgment, understanding the causes and conditions that lead to suffering, such as anger. The Role of Self-Reflection in Managing Anger by regularly reflecting on our experiences and reactions, we can identify the specific triggers that ignite our anger. This process reveals not just the superficial irritants, but digs deeper to expose the underlying expectations, attachments and fears that fuel our anger, 
Buddha taught that by understanding ourselves fully, we can begin to change our reactions to the world around us. Techniques for effective self-reflection 1. Daily Reflection Journal Dedicate time each day to write about events that triggered anger. Describe the situation, your reaction, and possible reasons behind it. Over time, patterns will emerge, offering insights into your triggers and how you might address them. 2. Meditative Reflection Engage in guided meditations that focus on self-reflection. Such practices help in calming the mind and provide the clarity needed to explore our deeper selves without the interference of tumultuous emotions. 3. Mindful Pause Implement a mindful pause before reacting in any situation. This pause helps to create a habit of reflecting on the emotion of anger itself, its causes, and its validity before responding. Real-life benefits of self-reflection Improved emotional regulation Understanding the why behind emotions can help manage how we express them. This awareness allows us to choose responses that align with our values rather than being hijacked by our impulses. Enhanced relationships By recognizing our role in conflicts and understanding our triggers, we can approach interactions more thoughtfully, reducing misunderstandings and conflicts. Personal growth and insight. Self-reflection fosters a deeper understanding of oneself, which can lead to personal transformations that transcend beyond managing anger, impacting all areas of life. Stories of transformation. The teacher. A high school teacher often felt frustrated with disruptive students. Through self-reflection, she realized her anger stemmed from a fear of appearing ineffective. With this insight, she adopted new teaching strategies that addressed her needs and the students, reducing her anger and improving classroom dynamics. The caregiver. A caregiver for an elderly parent struggled with impatience and anger. Self-reflection helped him realize that his anger was more about his fear of loss and his feelings of helplessness. Acknowledging these fears helped him approach caregiving with more compassion and less frustration. Challenges in practicing self-reflection The main challenge in self-reflection is confronting uncomfortable truths about oneself. It requires openness to acknowledge flaws and vulnerabilities. However, this challenge is also a pathway to profound personal growth and emotional liberation. Integrating self-reflection into daily routines. Incorporate short reflection periods into your daily routine, perhaps at the end of the day or after a stressful event. Use these moments to ask yourself reflective questions that probe deeper into your emotional responses Consistency is key to making self-reflection a transformative practice. Conclusion of Part 3 Self-reflection, as taught in Buddhism, is a powerful technique not just for understanding and managing anger, but for catalyzing comprehensive personal growth. By turning the mirror inward, we not only learn to control our anger, but also to live more consciously, responsively, and harmoniously. As we advance in our series, remember that each step enriches our journey towards mastering our emotions and enriching our lives with wisdom and peace. The next segments will build on these foundations, exploring further how mindfulness and compassion can directly influence and mitigate our experiences with anger. Part 4. Discovering the Strength in Stillness and Silence in a world that often values constant activity and noise, Buddhist teachings highlight the profound strength found in stillness and silence. This part of our exploration into managing anger delves into how these practices can serve as powerful tools to diffuse anger, enhance self-awareness, and foster a deeper sense of inner peace. The Power of Stillness in Buddhism 
Stillness in Buddhism is not just physical quietude, but also entails a calmness of mind. It is the practice of ceasing the relentless churn of thoughts and emotions that often fuels our anger. By cultivating stillness, we can access a state of clarity and composure that allows us to respond to life's challenges with wisdom rather than react out of emotion. Silence as a transformative tool. Silence, similarly, is not merely about the absence of sound, but about quieting the internal dialogue that criticizes, judges, and reacts impulsively. In the silence, we can hear the more subtle thoughts and feelings that often go unnoticed, but significantly shape our behavior and emotional responses. Integrating stillness and silence into daily life. One, mindful breathing. Begin by incorporating mindful breathing exercises into your daily routine. Focus solely on the inhalation and exhalation, allowing thoughts to pass without engagement. This practice helps cultivate both stillness and silence, anchoring you in the present moment. Scheduled quiet time. Set aside a specific time each day for quiet reflection, free from digital distractions and external demands. Use this time to sit quietly, perhaps observing nature, meditating, or simply being present with your own thoughts and emotions. Three. Silent Retreats Engaging in a silent retreat, even if just for a day, can significantly deepen one's experience of stillness and silence. These retreats provide structured environments where one can practice these disciplines intensely and without interruption. Benefits of Embracing Stillness and Silence Reduced Reactivity the calmness that comes from regular practice of stillness and silence helps reduce the impulsivity that often leads to anger. It allows one to pause and choose how to respond rather than being swept away by immediate reactions. Increased Emotional Intelligence Regularly engaging in practices that cultivate stillness and silence enhances one's ability to understand and manage not only one's emotions, but also to empathize with others, reducing conflicts and misunderstandings. Enhanced concentration and focus. These practices improve one's ability to concentrate and maintain focus, which can enhance productivity and creativity in all aspects of life. Real life stories of transformation. The corporate executive. A stressed executive used silent meditation to manage his work-related anger. Through daily practice, he found that he could approach stressful situations with a calm mind, which significantly improved his decision-making and leadership. The community leader. A community leader organized weekly silent walks in a local park for her neighborhood, which helped many participants find peace and reduce their daily stress and anger. Challenges in Practicing Stillness and Silence Practicing stillness and silence can be challenging in our fast-paced world. Many find it difficult to do nothing and may feel an initial increase in anxiety when trying to quiet their minds. However, with practice, these feelings usually subside, leading to greater peace and mental clarity. Conclusion of Part 4 Stillness and silence are powerful, transformative tools taught by Buddhism to manage anger and cultivate peace. They help us disconnect from the chaotic stimuli of the external world and connect more deeply with our true selves. As we continue to explore Buddhist teachings on managing anger, incorporating stillness and silence into our lives can serve as a foundation for developing greater emotional resilience and a more peaceful existence. In our next segment, we will explore how mindfulness can further enhance our ability to manage anger by deepening our awareness of the present moment and our reactions within it. Part 5. Mindfulness to Channel Your Anger 
Mindfulness, a cornerstone of Buddhist practice, offers a transformative approach to managing anger by fostering a deep awareness of the present moment. This part of our series explores how mindfulness can help channel and transform anger into understanding and compassion, ultimately leading to a more balanced and peaceful existence. Understanding Mindfulness Mindfulness in Buddhism involves maintaining a moment-by-moment -moment awareness of our thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations, and surrounding environment. This practice encourages a stance of openness, non-judgment, and acceptance. By cultivating mindfulness, we learn to observe our experiences without getting caught up in reactive emotions like anger. Mindfulness and Anger Management When anger arises, mindfulness allows us to acknowledge and accept the emotion without judgment or immediate action. This acknowledgement creates a space between feeling anger and reacting to it, providing an opportunity to choose a more considered response. Mindfulness teaches us to recognize the impermanence of our emotions, seeing anger as a passing state rather than a fixed part of our identity. Practical Mindfulness Exercises 1. Mindful Breathing Focus on your breath to anchor yourself in the present moment. This practice can be especially helpful when you feel anger rising. Concentrate on the sensation of air entering and leaving your body, which can help dissipate anger's intensity. 2. Body Scan Meditation This involves mentally scanning your body for areas of tension. Anger often manifests physically, tight shoulders, a clenched jaw or a knotted stomach. By becoming aware of these sensations, you can consciously relax them, reducing the emotional and physical tension of anger. 3. Walking Meditation Practice mindfulness while walking. Focus on the sensation of your feet touching the ground, the rhythm of your gait and your breathing. This can be a powerful way to connect mindfulness with movement, providing a physical outlet for anger. The benefits of mindfulness in daily life reduced stress and anxiety. Regular mindfulness practice has been shown to reduce the levels of stress and anxiety, which are often precursors to anger. Enhanced emotional resilience. Mindfulness enhances your ability to cope with difficult situations without resorting to anger. It builds emotional resilience by promoting a balanced response to challenges. Improved relationships. By responding more thoughtfully, you can prevent the escalation of conflicts and deepen your connections with others. Stories of transformation through mindfulness. The health professional. A nurse struggling with anger management began practicing mindfulness meditation. Over time, she noticed a significant decrease in her daily stress levels and an improved ability to handle challenging interactions with patience and empathy. The teacher. Facing a challenging classroom environment, a teacher used mindfulness to manage his reactions to disruptive students. His calmer demeanor led to a more respectful and productive classroom atmosphere. Challenges in Practicing Mindfulness While the benefits of mindfulness are significant, the practice requires consistency and patience. Many beginners experience frustration when they find their minds wandering constantly. However, the practice of returning to the present moment is where the real training lies, and with time, this becomes easier and more natural. Conclusion of Part 5 Mindfulness is more than just a technique for managing anger. It is a way of living that fosters greater awareness, compassion and wisdom. As we continue to explore Buddhist teachings for managing anger, integrating mindfulness into daily life stands out as a key strategy for transforming not only anger, but our overall approach to life's challenges. In our next segment, we will delve into the powerful practice of gratitude, which can further diffuse the intensity of anger 
and enhance our general well-being. Part 6. Elevating Life with the Power of Gratitude Gratitude, deeply ingrained in Buddhist teachings, serves as a transformative force that can fundamentally alter our emotional landscape, turning potential anger into appreciation and contentment. This part of our series explores how cultivating a practice of gratitude can diminish feelings of anger and significantly elevate our overall quality of life. Understanding Gratitude in Buddhism In Buddhism, gratitude is viewed not just as a reactive emotion to receiving, but as a proactive stance on life. It involves recognizing and appreciating the interconnectedness of all things, and the multitude of benefits we continually receive from others and the world around us. This recognition fosters a deep and abiding sense of joy and contentment, which can effectively counteract feelings of anger and entitlement. The Impact of Gratitude on Anger Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack or what has gone wrong to what is abundant and right in our lives. This shift in perspective can be incredibly powerful in mitigating feelings of frustration and anger. When we are grateful, we are less likely to fixate on the negatives and more likely to recognize the positives, which reduces the space and energy available for anger. Practical Ways to Cultivate Gratitude 1. Gratitude Journaling. Keep a daily journal where you list things you are grateful for. This could range from very simple pleasures like a sunny day to significant events like the support of a loved one. The act of writing reinforces the feelings of gratitude and makes them more concrete. 2. Mindful Acknowledgement Make it a habit to consciously acknowledge and thank others for their efforts and kindness, whether it's thanking a co-worker for their help or a family member for their support. This not only increases your feelings of gratitude, but also strengthens your relationships. Third Gratitude Meditation Engage in meditation focused on gratitude. Visualize the things and people you are grateful for and allow the feeling of thankfulness to permeate your being. Benefits of a Grateful Outlook Enhanced Mental Health Studies have shown that gratitude can significantly decrease stress and anxiety, which are often precursors to anger. Improved physical health. Gratitude has been linked to better sleep, more exercise, and fewer physical symptoms of illness. Strengthened relationships. Expressing gratitude can make us more empathetic and less aggressive, which enhances our interactions and relationships with others. Real-life stories of transformation The corporate manager After adopting a daily practice of gratitude journaling, a previously quick-to-anger manager found he became more appreciative of his team's efforts, leading to a more harmonious workplace and less personal stress. The single parent A single mother struggling with frustration and anger began practicing gratitude meditation, she found this not only helped her appreciate the small joys with her children, but also reduced her feelings of overwhelm and anger significantly. Challenges in maintaining gratitude While the benefits of gratitude are profound, maintaining a consistent practice can be challenging, especially during tough times when negativity seems overwhelming. However, the effort to remain grateful even in difficult circumstances can be particularly rewarding, offering a beacon of positivity in the darkest of times. Conclusion of Part 6 Gratitude is a powerful antidote to anger. By choosing to focus on what we are thankful for, we reduce the emotional space available for anger and dissatisfaction. As we cultivate gratitude, we not only enhance our own peace and well-being, but also bring a positive influence to those around us. In our final part of this series, we will explore how trusting the natural order and letting go of control can further contribute to managing anger and fostering a serene life. Part 7. 
trusting the natural order, letting go of control. In the final part of our exploration into Buddhist teachings for managing anger, we focus on the profound principle of trusting the natural order and letting go of control. This teaching helps us to embrace life's inherent unpredictability and to find peace in the understanding that not everything is within our power to control. Understanding trust in the natural order. Buddhism teaches that life unfolds in its own rhythm and logic, which may not always align with our personal desires and timetables. Trusting the natural order involves accepting that events happen in their own time and for reasons that may not immediately be apparent. This acceptance can significantly reduce feelings of frustration and anger that arise from unmet expectations and thwarted plans. The role of letting go of control. Trying to control every aspect of our lives and the actions of others is not only futile, but also a major source of stress and anger. Letting go allows us to reduce this self-imposed pressure, leading to a more peaceful existence. It involves understanding the limits of our influence and focusing our energy on what we can actually manage, our own thoughts and behaviors. Practical Steps to Trust and Let Go 1 Mindfulness Practice Regular mindfulness helps us to stay present and reduces our tendency to worry about the future or ruminate over the past, common triggers for the need to control. 2. Reflection on impermanence. Regularly reflecting on the impermanence of life can help us to accept that change is the only constant. This can reduce our resistance to unexpected changes. 3. Delegation and acceptance. Actively practice delegating tasks and accepting the outcomes, whether they meet your expectations or not. This can help in gradually letting go of the need to control everything. Benefits of embracing the natural flow, reduced anxiety and stress. Letting go of the need to control everything reduces anxiety and stress as it aligns our expectations with the realities of life. Increased adaptability Trusting the natural order enhances our ability to adapt to changing circumstances, making us more resilient and less reactive to change. Improved relationships. By not insisting on controlling the actions of others, we foster healthier, more respectful relationships. Stories of transformation. The entrepreneur. An entrepreneur learned to trust the natural order in her business dealings accepting that not every venture would succeed according to her timeline. This approach led to less stress and more creativity in her projects. The parent. A parent struggling with letting go of his teenagers learned to trust their judgment and make their own mistakes. This not only reduced conflicts at home, but also helped his children become more responsible. Challenges in practicing trust and letting go. One of the main challenges is the deep-seated fear that if we do not control, things will go wrong. Overcoming this fear requires faith in oneself and the process of life, which can take time and conscious effort. Conclusion of Part 7 Trusting the natural order and letting go of control are not about passivity, but about choosing where to direct our energies more effectively it's about making peace with the unpredictability of life and finding joy in the journey, regardless of the destination. As we conclude this series on Buddhist teachings to manage anger, we reflect on how each principle, from understanding the root causes of anger to embracing gratitude and letting go, works together to forge a path towards a more peaceful and mindful existence. Through these teachings, we can transform our anger into wisdom and our frustrations into lessons of growth and understanding, ultimately leading to a more harmonious life. This concludes our series on Buddhist teachings for managing anger. Through exploring various principles such as understanding the root causes of anger, embracing detachment, utilizing self-reflection, finding strength in stillness and silence, 
practicing mindfulness, cultivating gratitude, and trusting the natural order. We've uncovered a holistic approach to not just managing anger, but transforming it into a source of personal growth and peace. Series Recap and Integration into Daily Life, One Understanding and Beyond Ignorance. Understanding that ignorance, misunderstanding the true nature of reality, is the root cause of anger, sets the foundation. Regular mindfulness and meditation can help us see past our immediate reactions to the deeper truths of impermanence and interdependence. 2. Embracing Detachment Learning to detach from outcomes and the behavior of others prevents external circumstances from disturbing our inner peace. This involves practicing mindfulness and developing a non-attachment to the ego and its desires. 3. The Power of Self-Reflection Self-reflection allows us to recognize and modify our triggers for anger. By regularly examining our reactions, we gain insight into how our expectations and attachments lead to anger, allowing us to respond more wisely in future interactions. 4. Discovering strength in stillness and silence. Stillness and silence teach us to pause before reacting, providing a space to choose our responses. Incorporating practices like silent meditation or quiet walks into our routine can help cultivate a calm mind, less prone to anger. 5. Channeling Anger Through Mindfulness Mindfulness helps us recognize the transient nature of anger and choose responses that align with our deeper values. By being present in the moment and observing our emotions without judgment, we can manage anger more effectively. 6. Elevating Life with Gratitude Gratitude shifts our focus from what's missing to the abundance around us, significantly reducing feelings of anger. A daily gratitude practice can transform our perspective, enhancing both emotional and physical well-being. 7. Trusting the natural order. Letting go of the need to control every aspect of life allows us to trust in the natural flow of events. This reduces stress and fosters a peace that comes from understanding that not everything is within our control. Moving forward. As we integrate these teachings into our lives, it's important to remember that the journey is one of gradual transformation. Each step offers valuable insights and tools that when practiced regularly can lead to profound changes in how we perceive and react to the world around us. Final Thoughts Managing anger through Buddhist teachings is not just about reducing negative emotions, it's about enhancing our overall quality of life. It invites us to cultivate a mind that approaches each moment with wisdom, compassion and equanimity. As we continue to practice these teachings, we not only transform our own lives, but also contribute to the peace and happiness of those around us. Thank you for joining this journey through Buddhist teachings. May the insights gained inspire and guide you towards a more peaceful and mindful existence.